Greetings, Royal Family. It's your girl, Royal B, back with another video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Royal B, and welcome to the Royal Family. Well, hopefully you read the title before clicking on the video. Happy Monday, everybody. Hope you had a great, prosperous, well-rested weekend. Um, let's get started. Hopefully you're probably driving home from work, you completed your work day, and you wanna just kick back, relax, and just kind of chit chat. So that's why I'm here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So let me just jump right into it. I took a little bit of notes because over the weekend, some interesting things happened. And, you know, I just wanted to jump on here and talk about this because this should be celebrated for a very long time. Um, recently, the class of 2019 graduated from Morehouse College, which is a all male uh, university. And there was a keynote speaker by the name of Robert F. Smith. He is a philanthropist. He's also a billionaire. He is in the technology kind of field. So he decided that he was going to pay it forward in a huge way monetarily. He gave a great speech to the grads of 2019. Congratulations, Morehouse men. And then he stated that him and his family, Mr. Smith and his family plan on putting together a program uh, or a grant that will basically erase or pay off the student loans for all of the graduating class of 2019. And everybody, like you could kind of see the, they were like, the graduates were kind of dazed and confused. Some automatically like rejoiced and when I heard this, this just got me so inspired. First of all, bravo, Mr. Smith. You didn't have to do any of this. And the fact that you have gained a large amount of financial means, you're a billionaire. You have more money than Oprah, you know? And um, you decided to pay it forward, like in a, in a really, really big way, especially in these tough economic times for people coming out of college, you know, they're graduating, some don't even have jobs, and they have to worry about, yes, they celebrate graduating, but they also have to worry about the burden of student loans on top of any other financial responsibilities that they have. And for you, Mr. Smith, to just take this load off of these graduates is basically a blessing. There's no other word that I can use to describe it. It is a huge, huge blessing. And I hope that this inspires these grads to, you know, reach for their dreams, not have to worry about at least this financial burden as far as student loans are concerned, and pay it forward. They may not have the monetary means to pay off anyone's student debt, but hopefully the you know, they can go out into their communities, better their communities. And that's what Mr. Smith was basically saying. Like he's, he's hoping that they will carry on the torch to inspire, motivate, uplift, and help other people as they go forward. I mean that I, I just bravo. And again, he didn't have to do it. This man is a billionaire and he used his money to just like bless other people. And he's beyond rich, you know, he's wealthy, wealthy in spirit. His bank account is, is wealthy. And if not him, hopefully his family will reap the benefits of this huge blessing. So that is a positive, extremely positive way to kind of start out the work week. Cause you know, people don't like Mondays, you know, Mondays are a drag, but I just was so enamored with this story that I decided, yeah, let me come on here and just share my thoughts. Now what's, you know, I can't, can't, go by without, you know, cracking a joke or two. A lot of people on social media, you know, came up with memes and, and funny quotes. And I saw that a lot of people who were changing their graduate, they were going to be changing their graduation year from 2006 or seven to 2019. Uh, people were jokingly saying that they were going to reach out to Mr. Smith to help erase some of their student loans. And I just, that is just so inspirational. I mean, I could just end the video right there, but I won't, so don't click off. But that's just so inspirational, man. I just feel like if you have the opportunity and you have it in your heart to bless somebody, it doesn't have to be money all the time. You could bless someone with encouraging words. 
just do it. You don't know whose life it is that you're going to touch, whose life you're going to change. And, you know, I can only imagine like that one student or those couple of students who were probably trying to enjoy their day, but probably thinking about, dang, I'm already in debt. How am I going to pay these student loans? I'm probably going to have to take this job that's not in my field. And they were totally not expecting that. And, oh, that is just, it just lets me know that there's still good people, genuinely good people, no strings attached, good, generous people in the world. And I don't know much about um, Mr. Smith's background. Uh, I don't know like how he came up, how he grew up, but I'm pretty sure that he can identify with the struggle being a black man in this country acquiring so much wealth. He's a billionaire for Christ's sake. I'm pretty sure that he was met with uh, his fair share of like trials and tribulations and things like that. And I'm telling you, man, that is very, very honorable, man. Very, very, very honorable, honorable. And shout out to class of 2019 grads, man. And, and I wish you much success. And I just hope that all of your wildest dreams come true. That's all I can say. It's very, it's something that I sat with for a while because I did get emotional. Um, personally, I don't, I never had like student loans. I was fortunate, blessed enough to have, you know, parents and a village, as I like to call them, that was able to afford to send my brother and myself to college without us having to worry about debt. You know, we both finished college. I earned two degrees. My brother, he earned his degrees as well. And, you know, my mom was very adamant about us going to school and furthering our education. She said, what you do beyond that is on you. But, you know, being in this country is extremely important for you to get an education. You know, there were people who lived years before I did, years before my mother did, that fought to have opportunities that are available for us now. So, you know, she was, she took it very seriously and I took it very seriously as well. And I was fortunate enough to not have to worry about how am I going to pay this bill or, you know, where's my next meal coming from in college? I had to do this all on my own. I was really blessed enough to, um, to be able to go to school and not have to worry about the burden of the cost of, of college. And there's some people that it's just the amount of student loan debt it's crazy. It's crazy. And it just sucks because it's like you want to better yourself and you feel like this is the way to further, you know, further my education is the way for me to get a good job so I can sustain and take care of myself. And it's just like, it's so hard sometimes. It's so hard. Sometimes you just don't have the means, but those men had the dedication. They pushed through and they just, I guess, trusted God and look at the blessing that they received, man. That is, that's just phenomenal. I can go on and on about that, but I just want to cover a couple of topics or whatever. So again, shout out to class of 2019. Kudos to you gentlemen. Now go out and change the world and pay it forward. Moving along, uh, Trayvon Martin's mother, uh, Sabrina Fulton is running for Miami Dade, um, County commission. Now Sabrina Fulton is the mother of Trayvon Martin who was a teenager, a unarmed teenager that was assaulted, well, harassed, assaulted, and murdered um, by a human being, refused to say his name, in the state of Florida. And um, about six years ago now, or going on six years, seven years now, uh, this took place. And this human being who murdered this unarmed teenage boy, Trayvon Martin, uh, was acquitted of all charges. He faced no jail time, no probation, no nothing. And it was an ext it was bad. It was a, it was just, everyone felt that everyone who was in defense of Trayvon Martin, that is the people who were in defense of this human being. Um, of course, you know, it didn't affect them because he got off. So Sabrina Fulton, again, Trayvon Martin's mother decides that she, you know what? She wants to use her pain and turn it into power. Now, this woman is very honorable. This woman is very brave. This woman is strong. She had to bury her son before she anticipated doing so. Um, she had to deal with the fact that, you know, her son wasn't doing anything whatsoever. He was visiting his father in Florida, in a certain area in Florida. And she probably thought, yeah, you know, go ahead, spend time with your dad. 
when your vacation is over, I'll see you again. And she didn't, you know, and for her to use this pain or this tragedy, I should say, and want to help people, you know, not just shut herself off from the world, not just say, you know, screw everyone. This world is crazy. I hate everyone in it, but to be able to use that pain to foster something positive and productive to help other people, extremely commendable. I mean, it's only Monday, ladies and gentlemen, and look at all of this motivation. Look at all of this inspiration. You know what I mean? Like this is, so this is amazing. So Sabrina, basically she became passionate, obviously about gun control and anti-poverty. She's an activist for gun control and anti-poverty. And, um, basically she, she became more full-time activist after the murder of her son. So I like the fact that she is not only anti-gun, uh, you know, anti uh, for gun control, excuse me. She's also tackling the social issue of poverty because there's a, there's poverty in every city, in, in every state in the United States of America, even outside of the U S right. So she's taking the opportunity to kind of like shine light on poverty being an issue. Obviously it doesn't seem to be an issue for some people who choose to put their you know, their hand over their face and it doesn't affect them directly or their loved ones directly. So it doesn't, you know, they don't, they don't really care. Um, but again, this woman could have just shut herself off from the world and she's choosing to basically like fight the power. I respect a queen. I respect it. I respect it. I wish you nothing but luck. Hopefully, you know, a lot of people will support her. Um, yeah, hopefully a lot of us, will support her because this woman, like I said, she's gone through the pain of having to bury her son, you know, and these gun laws that are in Florida are very, very dangerous. And as you know, they passed the law that teachers in certain districts in certain uh, counties will be able to have guns in the classroom. And it's not even something that I want to touch on now because it's extremely emotional because when you think about the parents who had to bury their kids because of all of these school shootings that's taken place in Florida throughout the years, or are terrified that they may not see their child and they're just sending them to school. They're not sending them off to war in a third world country or in a different country. They're sending them to school to get an education and to know that this type of violence can take place. And on top of that, your child's teacher could potentially have a gun that could be misused and have numerous collateral damage. It's just, it's a mess. It's just a mess. Anyway, shout out to Trayvon Martin's mom, Miss Sabrina Fulton. We sending you positive vibes over here in the Royal family on a lighter note, Drake, Drake. So if you haven't seen or heard, Drake basically put on his good bronzer, got a good tan, you know, and, um, he went down to, uh, I think it's, um, game three, game three in the Eastern conference finals. Ooh, that's a tongue twister. So the Toronto, Toronto Raptors and the Milwaukee Bucks played in, uh, game three the other day. And Drake was on the sidelines. The only thing that he was missing was his pom poms, to be honest with you. He was like, you know, throwing jabs at the at the Bucks players, trying to agitate them. He was cheering on his boys. You would have thought that Drake was the coach. Drake, have a seat. You are not Spike Lee. Okay. The only person that can get away with doing that is Mr. Spike Lee. Not you, Drake. I don't know. I don't know what he must have made like a hefty financial contribution to the Raptors in order for him. He was like right there on the floor. He was going at it with the, with the referee. Like, you know, if there was a call that was made and the referee, you know, stuck to his guns, Drake was like, he had an issue. He was at the table. Like you are not the head coach of the Raptors, sir. Sit down. I think that he should be in a chair. I don't think he should be on the floor, like provoking the, the players of the opposing team. And what, what would he have done if one of the players like turned around and back slapped him? Like, would that have been warranted? Pro of course not. I don't know. The Raptors should have got a technical just because of Drake. I mean, if he shows up with pom-poms at tonight's game, 
I'm, I'm not here for it. So game four is tonight. Um, who's leading? Courtside game three. Oh, Milwaukee is leading two to one. So, yeah. And game four is tonight. So basically, if Milwaukee wins tonight, that's it? I don't know. I, as far as the stats are concerned, basketball has changed significantly. I used to be like on it. I, I mean, I catch some stats. I normally start watching when it's like now, like the, the Eastern and the Western Conference Finals are like winding down. And when it gets to the to the final finals, that's when I start tuning in now. Before, oh please, I used to always be up on it. So they'll be playing tonight. Game four is tonight at eight or nine on TNT or CBS, not TBS, one of those channels. Drake, sit down. That's basically what I want to say about that. Moving along, I don't know if you guys are a fan, but I am RuPaul. You know who RuPaul is. RuPaul needs no introduction whatsoever. So RuPaul is going to be launching a talk show, like a daytime talk show. It's supposed, they already taped um, three weeks worth of episodes. It's going to be like a test run. So the first episode is going to be in um, June. Now, when I saw this, I was like, daytime RuPaul? Mm. RuPaul had a show back in the day. I don't know if you recall. And I watched RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm a fan, fan, fan. And that's the element that I like to see RuPaul in because it's his show and he can say and do whatever it is that he wants. It's a great show. A lot of talent turned out from that show. But daytime, I don't know if I want to see RuPaul in daytime. I'm sure it'll be entertaining. Um, but here's the thing. What time slot is that going to be on? Is that going to be Wendy's competition? Because you know Wendy is like the queen of daytime television. So are they trying to usher out Wendy as her contract comes to a close or comes to an end and trying to usher in RuPaul? Don't know. We'll have to wait to June and see. So again, it's going to be like a three week sneak peek. Same thing that they did with Wendy. Um, when her show first came out, they did like a test run to see how people responded to see if the networks and, and, um, advertisers, you know, were interested, so on and so forth. So good luck RuPaul. I'll be tuning in. I like RuPaul. RuPaul is very like inspiring, entertaining, funny, fun, you know, so I wish you luck mother Ru. So we shall see. Ladies and gentlemen, royal family, royal kings and queens, Power Season 6. I don't know if you heard this disastrous news, but Power Season 6 will not be airing until August 25th. Yes, August 25th, 2019. And all I want to know is Courtney Kemp. I don't even want to talk to 50 Cent because 50 Cent, yes, he's an executive producer, but let's keep it real. Courtney Kemp is the writer of that show. And I think she has, does she have producer or EP credit? She either has produced like executive, not executive producer, producer credits. She is the brains behind power. Every scene, plot, twist, turn, Miss Courtney Kemp and her few people that she allows in her writing room when they are writing scripts. Okay. 50 cent is not in there. So miss Courtney Kemp, what in the big rich town is going on? Whose idea was it? And maybe it wasn't her idea. So I'm not blaming her. Whose idea was it to push season six premiere back all the way to the end of the summer to August 25th. What, what, what am I supposed to do during the summer? I ain't got no life. Oh, well, at least it's going to be 15 episodes. Normally the past seasons, they had like eight, nine. I think the last season had like 10 maybe. So we're going to get 15 episodes, but it's just going to seem so off. Like ever since I started watching power, it was always June, July ish. You know, you guys first had it on Sunday. I don't know if you was watching far back then, but it used to premiere on Saturday, um, Saturday nights. Then they moved it to Sunday and that's perfectly fine. But by August 25th, like what, what am I supposed to do the entire summer? This better be good. And if this is the series finale, 50 cent, uh, said that he's going to be having spinoff shows and some of the cast members, they've been doing press and they confirmed it. We don't want no spinoff. I don't want a spinoff of power. 
I want power to continue. And I know, I know, all good shows must come to an end. I think Game of Thrones, I've never seen one episode of Game of Thrones, but I know them thrones, people are serious about them thrones. So this is the series finale, uh, recently the series finale uh, aired for Game of Thrones and people are upset. So I, I sympathize with y'all, throners. I don't watch Game of Thrones. Maybe I might have to catch up on Game of Thrones throughout the summer since power is not coming back until the damn near the end of summer. Ay, ay, ay. Royal family, get down in the comments. Tell me what you think. Give me your thoughts, feelings, opinions. If it's something that you didn't like, put it in the comments. I'm not sensitive. If there's something that you like, that you want to talk about, you want to discuss further, or you have an opinion about, or if you have like some motivation for anybody, put it in the comments. Be sure to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to have access to all of the rest of my other content. Hit the notification bell so that you will not miss any, any, any of my uploads. Just wanted to come through on a Monday, kind of sprinkle some joy, give you a little bit of motivation. Yeah, that's about it. Until next time, Royal Family, peace.